two bags, please. Today at Tublandia, we're going to be doing a shootout on Curtis Mayfield's Superfly soundtrack. We'll be looking at three different pressings. Stay tuned. looking at the 1972 album Superfly by Curtis Mayfield. This is the soundtrack to the same mentioned film, Superfly, and it's one of the rare occasions in history where the soundtrack actually performed better than the movie, even though the movie and all the black exploitation films from the early 70s were very successful in their day. Today, we're gonna to be looking at three different copies in no uncertain order. We're gonna have the uh, 2022 Run Out Groove Edition, which just came out, cut from the original master tapes. We'll also be looking at the 2018 Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. Also, uh, this was actually cut from the tapes, uh, one of the rare non-digital MoFi's done recently. And then finally, we're going to be looking at a 20. 2009 Rhino reissue that came out at 180 grams. Uh, I'm not sure if this was cut from the original tapes or not, but um, yeah, that's the other one we'll be looking at. I didn't have any originals for this comparison, but these are all very similar, and uh, I suspect that this, if nothing else, will be a good surrogate for an original here. Okay, starting with the 2009 Rhino reissue. It's 180 grams, nothing too fancy, no gatefold. Has the original Kurtum style label, which is kind of fun. Um, onto the uh, listening notes. This was cut much hotter than either the MoFi or the 2022, which kind of surprised me for the time this came out. Um, the overall separation of the instruments was a little mushier um, and congested, which was kind of unfortunate. Uh, the uh, background, the organ was con in the back in the mix. The solo in uh, instruments were kind of buried. Um, the crescendo and little child running wild that just builds up um, was kind of muffled and the the drums were sort of in the background. The one good thing I can say about that is that Curtis's vocals were very much in front of the mix, but this is such an iconic kind of funk groove album that you don't want to sacrifice the funk for the, the vocals, in my opinion. So I was kind of surprised that they did that. Um, with uh, Pusher Man, the congas were really, really intense and discreet. You can even hear the overtones of the congas. So I was really, really impressed by that. Um, they were also kind of in the front of the mix, which was surprising compared to the other two, because although they're really nice and prevalent, you don't want them sort of to dominate everything, which is what I felt with this one. Um, the, also the decay from like symbols was a little understated and not really in your face. However, um, the, uh, <laughs> overall this album is recorded really well. It's one of the best funk albums ever made. Um, it's got that crunchy kind of wah-wah porn style guitar, whatever you want to call it. It's just incredible on this album. This is the very definition of wah-wah funk guitar in this album. And so that sounds really good. It sounds really good on all three pressings of this, so you can't go wrong. Um, the bass solo was, was uh, swelling, swelled really well. Um, overall, very wonderful. Uh, this one was...
Moving on for the comparisons, we have the 2018 Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab edition of Superfly. This is a not a silver level, but it's the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab and not original master recording, which this means supposedly that they could not verify the provenance of the original of the master tape they used, so they couldn't call it original master. However, based on their recent website updates, this was mastered from tape, and it does sound really, really good. Although I gotta say, this like the Allman Brothers band at Fillmore East, there were a lot of liberties taking with the mix compared to the original mix, which is fine. They both sound great, but not really accurate, neutral to the original, if you will. So this was actually mastered by Krieg Wunderlich of Bofi, who does a lot of their stuff. And then also um, Rob Loverde uh, cut the lacquer for this. So I don't know if he was working with Krieg or if Krieg did the mastering and then Rob cut the lacquer from Krieg's mastering or he did original mastering. The Discogs is kind of uncertain on that. But um, anyway, that's, that's who's credited with the mastering for this. And moving on to the listening notes for the MoFi, um, surprisingly, it has a very narrow soundstage. It's got, um, it was definitely between the speakers for some reason. Now, that being said, even though it wasn't as wide, it was the deepest of the three pressings that I listened to, which was very satisfying. And, you know, it, it sounded really, really good. None of these pressings sound bad. This was, a, this was recorded originally very well. Curtis knew what he was doing. He had a whole crew helping him out. Um, it's hard to go wrong with the original mix and the original mastering for this. However, that, you know, moving back to MoFi, um, there was a narrow sound stage, which I found not distracting, but noticeable as I listened throughout. Um, but the imaging was very, very nice, very distinct. I could hear everything. I could hear everything uh, when playing together. I could hear everything individually. Um, there was uh, some, you know, there's things like cymbal decays where the decay just lingered in the room. It was incredible to hear things like that. Um, it was at 45 RPM, of course. It's a lower noise floor, uh, and the bass was just deep, deep. But even with the deep bass you'd expect from this, because it, it is a soul funk album, right? Um, I, I think the mastering engineer has really tweaked it even further. I mean, there's a, the bass is really in your face. It's not overly done. It's not bloated. Not really, but it, it's, it's, it's moving towards that neighborhood. And so I guess it was a choice. Um, it's in your face. It makes sense. You want to have bassy funk albums, but, um, there's a bit of a detriment, um, because of that, the, um, the way the bass kind of overwhelmed everything, not overwhelmed, but it was there. It caused other things to sort of not get buried in the mix, but just not be featured as prominently. Now, don't get me wrong. The imaging is great, probably better on the MoFi than any of the other pressings. So you could hear things individually, but there was a cost of overall cohesiveness maybe, and maybe just not used to what the sound is that they presented, which is very pleasant, very good sound. It's just didn't really harken back to the original and it seemed like its own kind of piece of work. Just like the Allen Brothers band at Fillmore, Fillmore East was sort of its own piece of work when you get the MoFi edition. Maybe that has something to do with the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab versus original master recording. And I think the OMR, I think the SACD of this may even be original master recording. So these are questions that I think Nathan and some other people have asked, and I haven't really gotten good answers for why OMR on SACD versus Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab on the, L the equivalent LP. Who knows? Maybe someone knows in the comments can let me know. Um, one last thing on the MoFi, the, the, everything was crisp and nice. I really noticed like the panning from left to right and right to left on the congas and pusher man was really, really intense and really amazing. That crescendo that builds up on little child running wild, it builds up, it's in your face. It, it's almost dramatic, thematic the way it, it the, but the powerfulness of that crescendo translates to you. So overall, the MoFi was great pressing, no complaints, just sort of its own animal compared to the other two. Okay, moving on, third and final um, pressing to look at today. 
is this Runout Groove from 2022. It just came out, I think $40 from Amazon, uh, Chad, whoever else you want to buy it from. Um, wow, what can I say? This is cut from the original Master Tapes. It's a numbered edition. I have, you can see that, 3716 of 4,000, I believe. So they're not going to be around for too much longer. Now, you get a few cool groovy extras with this, one of which is the movie poster, which is, a, which is fun. Probably won't put it up anywhere, but it's always nice to have. Another fun item is this super groovy turntable mat. I personally am not a big believer of turntable mats. I'd assume let the record mate to the platter perfectly, but this is super fun no matter what. You get a little bit of a deeper dive on the liner notes. You have this little booklet. Nice little narrative. Some cool pictures, but no pictures of the tape boxes. Oh well, can't get everything. Now, moving on to the pressing itself. My listening notes are as such. Okay, wow. So the run out groove, for whatever reason, super wide sound straight, sound stage, really wide really incredible just as deep as the mofi but it wasn't as apparent that it was deep because it wasn't super narrow like the mofi was um the dynamics loud to quiet very strong very dynamic low frequencies to highest frequencies very dynamic uh the percussion was super sharp the imaging was sharp maybe not quite as pin price pin pinpoint precise as the MoFi, but because, you know, it did have a better, a more of a cohesiveness to it. So the MoFi was like pinpoint imaging, but maybe not as cohesive as it could have been otherwise. So with this runout groove, this 2022 runout groove, you've got the imaging that you need, but everything that comes together, the crescendos that build, the little funk lines, the panning of the congas from left to right, everything is exactly where it needs to be. The bass, super strong, super strong. It's not over the top like MoFi's was, but it's strong enough. It's, it's, it's a soul funk album. You gotta have bass, right? But you also have to have, you know, that wah-wah, that washed out guitar, right? That, that wah-wah guitar, that porn guitar, whatever you wanna call it. That is going to be prominent. It was the best in this 2022 runout group. I mean, to me, the funk, the drivingness of the funk, and that wah wah guitar is what makes this album and a lot of any of this soul funk stuff from the early 70s super stand out. Um, I can't say enough about just how easy this was to listen to. Um, everything I looked for was there. Nothing stood out for me as unpleasant or not, not really fitting. I mean, it was it was just well cohesive, well done, and well prepared um, pressing. I can't say enough about it. Um, yeah. The crescendo in Little Child Running Wild, it's the best of the three. It builds up, and so it's it really is in your face and really is, is, is an emotionally stirring part of that song if you just let yourself go to it. So... I'm super impressed with the uh, with the run out groove. Probably my favorite of the three. Although, if bass is your thing and you like that, that's it. Then get the MoFi because the bass is exaggerated. It's over the top, and if that's your thing, you're gonna love that edition of this. Cool. Hope you made it this far. And just to do a brief brief recap, uh, today, September 2022 of this album, Superfly, of the three editions I've auditioned and shot out today. Uh, my favorite of the three was the Run Out Groove. 2022, still available. Oh, I didn't even mention the bonus disc on here is amazing because you get a, the, the song, The Underground, the 1970 demo version, which has been out before, but golly, it is nasty, funky, and strong. I mean, Get this for the best pressing of Superfly out there, 
And then you get the bonus second track of the outtakes, which are all really interesting and strong on their own. So that's number one. Number two, not by much, but by enough, the MoFi. Sounds great, best bass of the three, best imaging of the three, deepest sound stage, but also the most the most different from the original mix and the original sounds of this recording. Finally, my least favorite, but still a very respectable version of this, is the 2009 Rhino edition. All these pressings are great. The recording's done really well. I mean, I suspect, you know, this one, the Rhino is $25 on Discogs right now for Near Mint. I suspect you can find all these for some variation of that, except the MoFi, who knows what the market's gonna do on those, but it is analog, so it is at least a true analog recording. Um, and then the run out grooves, 40 on Amazon, 40 from Chad, whatever. Um, to me, that's the one to get. The rest of these are all strong in their own right. And you know what? Sometimes I do these shootouts and it's like, oh, okay, let's listen to In Memory of Elizabeth Reed for the 12th time on the sixth pressing. But, you know, with this, with Superfly, this shit is great. It's great. The movie's great too. I mean, it's, it's an iconic film. It tells the narrative of the pusher man and Superfly from, a, you know, an anti-hero perspective that's been done before, but like not at this level, not with this kind of theme around it. So I can't recommend this enough. Can't recommend the movie enough. Um, again, if you like this, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Let me know your feelings in the comments. Do you like these? Do you, are there other pressings I missed? Should I have gotten an original to really have the full suite of uh, options available? Welcome your comments as in all things. And uh, thanks again for visiting Tubelandia. Bye-bye.